So there are a ton of really awesome combat mechanics in Ghost of Tsushima that will definitely make you feel like a true samurai or a ninja depending on your playstyle. And in this video I want to cover all of those amazing abilities that it's very likely you aren't using enough. But you definitely should because there are some really amazing combos you can pull off in this game as the combat in Ghost of Tsushima can be quite advanced. So let's jump right into it with all of the tips and tricks you should know and as always a thumbs up on this video would be super awesome. I also want to give a huge shout out to Instant Gaming for sponsoring this video, they've been a huge part of my channel for the past year and they've been organizing a ton of giveaways here on this channel for you guys, but they also sell games at some of the cheapest prices you can find around, so if you also enjoy big gaming discounts, definitely go ahead, check out my links in the description box down below as well as in the pinned comment. So let's begin with that stance gameplay and the combos that you can pull off for the maximum amount of damage. Each of the four stances has one heavy special attack that you can pull off by holding down triangle on your controller. The cool thing about these is that they are all very useful no matter what enemy you're facing and no matter what stance that enemy might require you to use. Even including bosses if you were wondering, these are not just amazing against bosses but I'm also going to teach you in just a little bit how to combine all of these attacks to deal one continuous flurry of attacks. Now the first one is called piercing strike in the stone stance, you kinda do this frontal stab with a sword and you can upgrade this to do three consecutive stabs that kinda deal a ton of damage, especially against brutes or anything with a larger body. Now normally you would use this against a staggered enemy following a shield break for the maximum amount of damage, which usually also means one-shotting enemies, but you can also use this in a more risk high reward situation to anticipate incoming attacks and just let the enemies charge you in and get themselves stabbed with the sword. For this you will have to learn their attack patterns, but trust me once you do that it is definitely worth it, because once you can anticipate their attacks, you can get ready with a piercing strike and just let the sword do the work for you while they are jumping in that attack. And bonus points, you don't have to break their guards because they are in the middle of the animation so they cannot defend themselves most of the time. This brings us to the flurry strike in the water stance. I really love this one because it deals consecutive slashes that are perfectly made for shield breaking and when fully upgraded you kinda deal 5 slashes in total that each are increasingly more powerful than the previous one to deal more damage. It's basically well suited against shield enemies so once you pull this off you will see that even like the brutes with the big shields will get their stagger meter up and you can break down their guards very easily. But it's also amazing against bosses as I've said even though you would normally use the stone stance since most of them have swords and that is because it does two things. First of all it overwhelms enemy with a high number of attacks which means that if they aren't forced to block all of those attacks and have their stagger increase um, you will deal a ton of damage to them, so it's kind of like a win-win situation. And even if they do block all of your attacks, this gives you a ton of breathing room where they are occupied to block your attacks while you have enough time to plan your next one. And this brings us to that attack combo I was talking about, which brings us to the spinning strike in the moon stance. And I really like combining flurry strike with spinning strike to put a ton of pressure on the enemy, break all of those guards, and just shred them to pieces, especially the bosses. So the attack does what it says, it's basically a spinning dance of death and when fully upgraded you can do additional spins up to 3, basically shredding everybody around Jin. It's almost always uninterruptible even against enemies and heavy attacks from enemies, so this means you're basically not going to be able to stop. Which is why this ties in with that flurry strike so well. You can basically start with a flurry strike to immediately put pressure on the enemy and take down their guards and then follow up with the spinning strike to put even more pressure and finally deal a ton of damage, which also opens up the boss to other types of attacks like the ones from the mythical skills. The final one is the Typhoon Kick in the Wind Stance. I really love this one because you can basically kick anybody from any building or ledge or any other type of high place. There's even an achievement for that and it's just hilarious to pull it off. But otherwise, when fully upgraded, this can be extremely useful against almost any enemy in the game as you can kick them to the ground, which makes them instantly open for an instant kill. But what makes it special is the fact that it's also very suited against the bosses, especially their unblockable red attacks. Not only can you interrupt them, but even if you don't, you can easily dodge them. As many of these attacks will aim for Jin's upper body, the Typhoon Kick makes him kinda reach to the ground and do an upward kick that is most often than not going to just dodge the entire attack completely and still opens up the enemy for the attack. Again, as I've said, you're going to want to switch between the 
these as often as possible and keep combining these attacks with one another because they are going to simply overwhelm any enemy in the game. And even though I cannot verify this 100%, I have also noticed that bosses can adapt to your attacks if you use the same attacks too often, which in this case isn't going to be possible anymore because you are constantly doing those switches and shredding them to pieces in the process. Nonetheless, let's move over to other tips and tricks that you should definitely know and this brings us to learning and nailing down the timing for perfect dodging and perfect parrying. The general rule for this game from what I've noticed is as follows. Most of the enemy attacks in this game have a rather long wind up but the strike is almost instant. So basically that's why you're seeing a ton of people getting surprised by the incoming attacks is because you will see that the enemies kind of do a longer charge but then immediately strike in and deal damage onto you. Which brings us to rule number one, dodge or parry earlier than you think you should. Let's take a few examples. So if you see an enemy swordsman trying to launch in and do a very powerful heavy attack, dodge and parry just as you see their feet leaving the ground, because if you do it afterwards it might be a little bit too late. It also doesn't have to be too sudden because otherwise you miss that entirely and you're still exposed to damage, so you kind of have to nail this down but these should guide you enough. For the shieldmen just pay attention to their red unblockable attacks, which is why I suggest keeping your distance so that you can better anticipate any of that. Um, if not, you can just anticipate your regular attack and just get into position to parry or perfect dodge. Again, they also kind of do like a charging with the sword, so it's quite easy to notice since they move even slower than the swordman, but if you're like me, you're probably going to have the initiative and you're just going to follow in with a flurry attack that's going to break their guards instantly and just shred them to pieces anyway. This brings us to the spearmen and in my case I found them to be the easiest of them all, maybe because they all have like blue attacks, so eventually if you upgrade your deflection skill you're going to be able to like just perfect parry that and take them down, but it's even easier once you invest a point into win spear defense as you can automatically parry during any win stance attack, so you don't have to worry about like parrying their attacks anyway. This brings us to the toughest of them all which are the brutes, you have to avoid these at all costs because they constantly use those red attacks, like the ones with the cannons they will constantly charge it up and shoot it, the ones with like the big axes they will constantly spin around and it's very hard to dodge, so the best course of action here is to just switch to the moon stance and then overwhelm them with triangle attacks until they have their guards broken so that they are easy targets. The only other type of enemy I'm going to mention are the ranged ones, especially the archers, really annoying, they constantly throw arrows at you, so these should be the ones that you should focus first at the start of each fight, as they also die quite easily in one or the maximum two shots at most. But later down the line you will also encounter these enemies with knives that also throw a ton of explosives from afar, so do the same, take care of them, otherwise you're going to be overwhelmed. This brings us to the next tip on the list and that is, use quick menu actions to slow down time and better adapt to incoming attacks. And yes, this might have been like obvious to many, but bringing up the quick menu slows down time, which means that it's almost cheating against many of those incoming attacks, and I suggest using R2 because this brings up that stance quick menu, so you can also quickly switch between these stances while also seeing the enemies in slow motion. Again, just all around great to use against almost anything. Anyway, enough with the samurai skills, let's also talk a bit about the ghost gameplay and how you can make your assassinations much easier. Um, obviously it goes without saying that you need to get into position to completely pull off an assassination. Even more so, invest your first few points into the chain assassination since it's one of the most powerful attacks in the game. But not all of the enemies are going to be within reach, which is why you should also know that if you jump in the air and the enemy is below you, you can still perform the assassination. Which is why I oftentimes just jump in the air and then as soon as I'm looking down at the target, I'm pulling off an assassination if that target is further away. This is perfectly suited for enemies that might be too far away from your jump point or even more so too close to the point that they might be underneath you so you can just jump a little bit and then immediately follow with an assassination but this takes a little bit more time to practice. Also firecrackers, combine firecrackers with chain assassination to clear up groups way faster. Finally let's also talk about some of those upgrades that you should focus on, especially the first one on that tanto. Go ahead and upgrade it as early as possible because at level 1 the assassination animation takes a little bit too long to perform to be comfortable with it, but at the maximum level almost all of them are instant and you're basically going to just stand
stab enemies in the face left and right, they are instantly killed and you're going to make stealth so much easier. But that is it with all of these tips and tricks for combat, I hope that this made combat much more enjoyable, easier for you and also more satisfying. If it did, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe, that would be super awesome and I will see you guys in the next one, so peace out!